Dragon Domovsky, welcome to Property Insights, mate. Now you're you're the founder. I can't believe you got this name of a buyer's agency, but the actual name of the business is called Buyers Agency Australia. That's correct. B A W A. Yep. How the hell did you get that name? Uh, well, a little bit of uh, research within you know Google search and and uh, just jumped on and, and pretty much found out hey, Buyers Agency Australia is available. Uh, Googled it. It was it's all there, and I thought okay, well the name's available with uh, within the business as well, so I took it. How long ago were we talking about? Oh, it was only a few years ago. Wow. About, about three, four years ago. Because buyers agencies have been around sort of for a while. I mean, mm. the, the, the popularity of them has probably become much more important, especially during the uh, COVID period. Yeah. Give me a little bit of a history about your background relative to becoming a buyers agent. Okay, so let's go back. Teenage years, I uh, had a hobby of photography. Uh, started when I was about 13, 14 years old. Uh, that was a passion, uh, moved into uh, studying, photo- well, I actually studied electrical engineering straight after high school, did that for a couple of years, hated it, um, got into photography, and then at the age of 22, started my own business with uh, three staff and eventually got up to about uh, you know, 12 to 15 staff, depending on the year, and uh, had one of, um, you know, one of those studios that you come in, get your hair and makeup done and all that. But I was one of the first studios to actually introduce uh, digital uh, retouching instead of using the soft focus filters in front of the cameras so that sort of kicked off well and uh, and yeah so did that for about 13 years and and then got into uh, dabbled in a few other businesses and uh, then got into property but why, why property uh, that was a passion of mine since I started uh, a couple of years into photography uh, I had uh, the guy who I was actually leasing from his office was at the front of uh, the studio and he was always driving around, you know, uh, Lam- Lamborghinis and Ferraris and all that. So I sort of approached him and I said, uh, Louis, what are you, uh, your business must be doing pretty well. He goes, well, it's actually not the business. Business is going well, uh, but it's actually more, uh, more into the property side of things. And I said, okay, fair enough. And uh, a few months later, I actually asked him, like, can, you, can you teach me what you do? And uh, that was 20 odd years ago. Do you, when you become buyer's agent, do you sort of choose an area? Like you just sort of choose, you know, I don't know, St. Mary's or you decide to choose uh, Sutherland. Mm-hmm. What did you choose? Okay, so there's a there's a broad range of uh, different type of buyer's agent. You've got your commercial property, people who specialise in commercial. You've got your holiday uh, rental type of buyer's agents. You've got your own occupiers. You've got your, you know, large blocks of land and you've got your investment, uh, uh, investment buyer's agents, which are what I specialise in. So I specialize in your standard, you know, three, four bedroom standalone homes that bring in a positive or neutral uh, return. So when you say positive or neutral return, you so representing your client mm-hmm. to buy a property. Yep. That's a house. Yes. Usually. Yep. And it's got three and four bedrooms. Mm-hmm. Come back to why in a sec. And uh, it doesn't matter where it is. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter in Australia. That is, yeah, depends on budget and strategy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and depending on budget and strategy, but yep. any everything's open to be purchased in. Mm-hmm. And you said uh, neutrally. You mean neut- neutrally geared? In other words, um, from the client's point of view, that they're not losing money or making money, or at least making money. Exactly. From from uh, from uh, the first year, they're at least not losing money, so they're neutral. So that means all. Ex- uh, all expenses and interest and then at the end result they've you know it's it's minus rent mi- yeah so so would you ha- so w- when you get your client you're sort of talking yep. to your client and they're in front of you yeah that whether or not it's neutrally geared or neutrally cash flow neutral <laughs> um usually would depend on the amount of money they borrow which depends on the amount of um Purchase price, obviously, and also yep. depends on the amount of deposit yep. deposit they have. If you go back, say, 18 months or six, 16 months, whatever it is, mm-hmm. those who are buying neutrally cash flow then yep. probably aren't neutrally cash flow now unless the rent's kept pace. Well, well that's right. So it uh, really depends on the interest rate. Yeah. Okay. So I'll give you an example. There's, uh, there's a client I purchased a property only just a few months ago. And that's got four bedrooms. Now, obviously, when the interest rates rise, you're going to be a bit more, uh, how do I say, creative on the type of property you're purchasing. So at the moment, I am purchasing uh, in an area where there's student accommodation is, um, is in demand. Okay, so four bedroom property house that I purchased for a client for 560000 uh, We can get them a return of, uh, of 800000 
uh, to $1,000, depending if it's a four or five bedroom per week. Wow. Yeah. That's like a 10% return nearly. Pretty much, yeah. 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 So wh- wh- where do you... Where's the area? I um, can't tell you that. <laughs> no, I what, can tell you off off camera, but I yeah. But, but it's in it's in Queensland, and obviously it's it's near a uh, an institution. Yeah, that's an right. An educational institution. Exactly. Yeah. So yep. are you sort of hovering around education institutions, and you know, like you might have them pinned up on a map. Yep. It might be some place in Queensland, and uh, you know, near a university or a school or whatever, mm-hmm. big school, probably a university which has a bigger intake yep. and then uh, you then start to look around what's for sale in that area. Is that what you do? So what we do, yes. So obviously been doing it for a little while now. A lot of the time, uh, look, we would, but I would say 90% of the time the agents contact us before it's even on market. Right. Okay. So by doing this, they will, uh, we then have the opportunity to then negotiate before it actually goes on market and the prices go up because of emotional buyers who come into the market and say, hey, I, I can see this property is worth six hundred thousand. I'll offer them five uh, five hundred. Now, obviously, it's you know they don't always agree, but at least we can then negotiate to favour the clients on closer to the five hundred than the six hundred. So, do you, do you find the property for the client only after the client is in your in your office, you know, telling you that they want to buy a property? Yep. Or are you buying these properties and then ringing up the clients? No. So uh, I would get a call from a client. They'll say, okay, Dragon, uh, we've got this much to spend. We're pre-approved for this amount, uh, this type of strategy that we want to do. So what we do is we, we find out what, what their aim is, uh, the end goal, and then we work back from that uh, and, and work out a strategy on, on how to get them there. Yeah, build a little strategy as opposed to just yeah. doing a transaction. Exactly. And then in terms of... Uh, like you just made a good point about student accommodation, given that so many more students coming back in Australia at the mm-hmm. moment, um, and they don't mind sharing a house because they'd rather no. share a house and share a, a go and rent apartment on their own. It makes it's good logic in terms of getting a better return, like increasing the return mm-hmm. for the client for the for the owner of the property. Do owner occupiers use buyers agents very often? Of course, yeah, and I would say, look, that's probably five percent of my business where. Uh, you know, the local market here, I'm looking at Eastern Suburbs or Inner West, where I, I know uh, the agents really well. And then I would get uh, clients who approach me and say, hey, look, we're looking for a place to live in. Can you help us within this area? So, yeah, definitely. So so you, you rely heavily on having good relationships with all the various agents in 100%. the areas that you'd like to specialize in. Yeah. So yeah. how do you do that? Do you go around... It's it's have years coffee? of yeah no it, well yeah sometimes we do yeah uh, but it's years of telephone calls and, and good relations and also um, you know treating them well as well but not not burning them and, and making absolute stupid offers and and having them never to call you again if something does come up that's off market. So with the agents, the vendors' agents, would they rather deal with you? Do you think than sort of you know put it to the market and wait for offers to come in from purchases? Look, sometimes we do get uh, emails and calls from people to say, hey, you know what, I've got a, a house for sale. Do you have anyone on your books? Sometimes, uh, you know, the, the, it does fr- uh, fruition into, the, into a sale and it really depends on how desperate they are to sell. Uh, again, we go back, we do our due diligence, we find out what the, the value of that property is. We see then if we have someone on our books that's, uh, that's looking for that style of property, uh, go back to the, to the seller and say, hey, we could, we could give you this, uh, this price for this if you want to take it or not. It's there for you. So do, in your experience, what, what are the more, let's say four or five, if there are four or five, but four or five reasons, the more regular reasons why vendors mm-hmm. um, tend to sell through a buyer's agent mm-hmm instead of just putting it to the market normally? Look, there's uh, this, uh, what we call distress sales. People in financial uh, difficulty that need to offload it, they don't want uh, to be waiting, you know, two, three months, I'm not sure. Um, if you ever uh, had sleepless nights stressing financially, some people just ra- rather just, you know, take a 50%, uh, sorry, a 50,000 loss, a cut on a property and just sell the property straight away than waiting and having those sleepless nights. Um, sad to say, but it's, it, it happens. So distress sales? Yeah. Is that people who haven't even tried to sell it through a vendor's agent? That's right. Yeah, so they're yep. just saying, they know you're a buyer's agent, yep. they just say, mate, find me a buyer. Yeah, yep, exactly. Yeah, okay, So because so, they just want to get the hell out of there. Get the hell, that's right. Yep. Is, and are you, are you, that's one, okay, yep. any more? Uh, look, we've, we've got, uh, you know, uh, a perfect example of uh, 
couple of weeks ago, an old lady is moving into a retirement village. She purchased the property for 50,000 or 60,000 several years ago. And, uh, you know, uh, she's, she's got a property that's selling for 600,000, just an example. Um, we come in and we'll make an offer at, you know, 550. Um, she doesn't mind, you know, she prefers having a, 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 her property discounted than having, you know, strangers walk into a house and uh, again, having to, to wait. Sometimes we have people who have just purchased a property uh, that they're gonna move into and they need to sell, uh, you know, to finance that particular property that they've just purchased. And they're also happy to take, take a, you know, a, a little bit of a loss. Yeah, so, yeah. so sort of convenience, confidentiality, yeah. distress, yep. sales. In those circumstances, though, are you dealing direct with the vendor or dealing with the vendor's agent? Uh, some, both. Right. Yeah. So both. how do you find a vendor then? Like, I, I can see how you find the a vendor. vendor's agent, have a coffee with them or whatever. But yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how do you find a vendor? The vendor will, will actually come to us. Oh, they, don't, they, okay, yeah. they, they know about you guys yeah, and yeah, they just yeah. go straight to you guys. Yeah, so they'll Google search buyers agency and, you know. We'll oh, really? Up. Yeah. People, people are doing that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's quite a, quite a few now. It's wow. actually, it's becoming much more popular now. Yeah, I didn't know it was a thing. Yeah. And that's, that's cool. And uh, in, in terms of, you know, you, you've seen a lot of interest rate rises in the last 16 months. Mm-hmm. How does the market look? I mean, from a buyer's point of view, is it becoming more of a buyer's agent's market or a buyer's up market? Do you think it's becoming that now? You know, it's funny. There's there's very limited stock at the moment. Uh, people are holding onto their properties. But what uh, what I have noticed, uh, talking also to uh, a few of the um, mortgage brokers that I deal with, uh, applications have doubled in the last uh, the last month. So more buyers are coming in as, as investors. So people, are, what I've noticed, especially the last couple of years, are getting much more educated within investing. Um, and we're seeing quite a lot of, of those people coming in. So, yeah, and, and are they people, because, are they, and what's bringing them in? What, why are they getting excited? Because every time I look in the, into the core logic numbers, it seems like prices are going up. It doesn't mm. seem as though they, they would be attracted to come in because prices are going down. Is it because the rents are going up? What, what, what's attracting Look, them? Look, there's yeah, d- definitely there's uh, very l- uh, little stock within it, as you know. Um, rental uh, properties are just are just harder and harder to to get. So, um, yeah, yeah, definitely the, the rents uh, the rents are going up, and uh, and you could still, you know, for your for the first time investors or even you know second investors. Uh, that are purchasing properties at a five six hundred, so it's still affordable, and people are becoming a little bit more savvy the more edu- uh, educated they're uh, they're becoming, knowing they can purchase a property for five fifty and get six hundred rent. So wh- wh- where's this? You don't need to tell me specifically, but mm-hmm. where's the sweet spot in terms of your your business anyway mm-hmm. for buyers? We're talking about a million six hundred five six hundred. Yeah, where between between four fifty to six hundred. Right. 600,000. And, and that's obviously not New South Wales. I mean, mm. maybe in New South Wales. It's definitely not really in many not places Sydney. in Sydney. No. But it's, so we're we talking about regional New South Wales or are we talking about um, parts of, you know, you mentioned Queensland earlier, but say parts of Queensland, South mm-hmm. Australia, those sorts of places. Yeah, look, it, uh, it comes back again to the strategy. Um, are they looking for growth or are they looking just for a high rental yield and not necessarily growth or a bit of both? So if they are looking for that uh, high rental yield, I would say, yeah, definitely regional. Uh, does bring in, uh, you know, um, a low entry but high rental yield. Uh, and I would say parts of Brisbane for, for the growth. So where, where do you see the most upside now? Like in, is definitely in Brisbane. Brisbane. Yeah. Why, yeah. Why, why is that, do you think? Again, the affordability. Um, parts there's uh, parts of uh, of Brisbane uh, councils that actually have in the last few years have had the uh, the highest population growth in Australia. Right. So so you're saying there's demand for housing because yeah. people are moving there. Yes. Yeah. And again, because of the affordability, probably yep. for some reason. But also, there's probably jobs up there. There's there's job yeah definitely uh, much more jobs coming up. Uh, also, the Olympics. Ah, yeah, I forgot about that. That's yeah. 2032 or something. So like that's that. right, yeah. Yeah, so and that's an in, in, interesting point. Mm-hmm. So, like, I mean, I, I, was, I was interviewing someone the other day about um, an agent about St. Mary's, which is close to the new, second airport in Sydney. Yeah. And he was talking about the demand for housing and just generally speaking in the, his area, which is only you know, 10 k's from where the airport's going to be, Badger's Creek. Mm-hmm. That's a good example where infrastructure drives... Um, Demand. Yep. Um, you're saying uh, event event infrastructure and or sort of uh, 
affordability as part of infrastructure can drive demand as well in a place like Queensland. I've, I've often been a big believer in Queensland, particularly Brisbane and the outskirts of Brisbane. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I like it a lot. I mean, weather's good. Yeah, You buy cheap. You don't have all the hassles of, of a bigger mortgage here in Sydney. That's probably yeah. not, not as expensive to live up there, I guess. It's pretty pre- pretty pleasant. You know, yeah. it's good territory. Yep. Um, the only thing is you're going to you've got Queens, you're gonna have to become a Queensland and have to go for the Maroons. But other than that, <laughs> uh, other than that, it's, it's pretty good territory. And people are starting to wise up to this stuff, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are, they are becoming, uh, becoming more savvy and much more educated than what they used to be, say, five years ago. And then uh, do, in, do investors, uh, have you doing much in Adelaide? Are you getting much uh, a, a little bit, yeah. a little bit, yeah. I, look, I, I, I tend to stick to New South Wales and Queensland the most. Um, only because of of the uh, of what's happening with infrastructure and and you know the way the growth and population growth and job demand, which just drives me to those areas. It's, it's interesting too. Like um, it's much easier to get two half million dollar loans than it is to go and get a million dollar loan today. Correct. Yep. Yep. It's just easier, and uh, broker mortgage brokers always tell you it's just just easier to get it. Does it doesn't make sense logically, but it just mm-hmm. is. Um, and particularly if um, you, can, you can pull a rent out of the two, you yeah. Know? And exactly. if you can get the sorts of rents you're talking about, and if you can get if you can get above five percent, my God, you're doing so well um, yeah. in terms of yield. Yeah. Um, and being inventive or creative is, I think, the word you use about how you work out how to squeeze a bit more lemon out of the uh, juice out of lemon. Yeah. In terms of say, particularly four bedroom houses, where's the most of the demand that you're seeing? Say, let's just talk Brisbane for the moment. Is the most of <laughs> the demand for houses or Apartments or townhouses, or what are we looking at? Well, look, I, I don't really deal in uh, in apartments and uh, townhouses, mainly uh, houses. So I can't give you the data on apartments and townhouses. But, you, but, but, but so, but you're, but you're still seeing a lot of demand, and and, oh, yeah. and, and the people um, looking at these things because they want to. I don't know about Queensland, but they want to put a granny flat out the back or Duloc. You know, is yeah, there much yeah, that yeah. going on? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, one of the strategies that I do is is I get uh, I get my clients educated on purchasing a a house that is probably positive or, or neutrally geared that's got a larger block um, we obviously do the research for them to say hey you know this particular block one day can be subdivided and then you can pay down your debt quicker so we've had all these rate rises mm-hmm. do you think it's going to dampen the property market i don't see it it's still going yeah it's yeah it's amazing it's still going so what, so what do you think they i mean i don't want them to do it but what do you think they think they need to do to to dampen the property market because they definitely want to dampen the property market. Mm-hmm. What do you think they need to do? I mean, how many more rate rises can we stand before this market oh, sort of collapses? I can't. Yeah, I can't answer that. Look, I actually thought at the start of the year they would they would you know put the brakes on, but it didn't happen. Right? I see probably another two or three rate rises. Yeah, personally. Wow. You know, because I am seeing people ask you know purchasing more and more. Wow. You know, it, this year has been the busiest year for me. Yeah, and you're not getting more vendors contacting you say well i've got to sell no funny enough no which look um um, that could be that could change in the next six months six to nine months uh but this year no no i haven't i haven't seen that do you remember your first property you bought uh yes it was in pimble uh it was it was one of my uh, i guess my mistakes purchasing apartments uh not knowing uh not knowing how to negotiate not knowing how to do my research on what the actual value was my first apartment, two bedroom apartment on Pacific Highway. Oh, good one! <laughs> <laughs> but it was right across the road from the station, so there was a bit of a strategy there. So near the station, so it was good. <laughs> Did you sell it or you keep it? I that one I sold. Yeah, yeah. you sold. Yeah, yeah. And and you're still in the property game. You're yeah, still buying, yeah. buying, selling for yourself. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. And what would you say? Buy and keep, or buy and sell when the profits there? Look, it's again, it comes down to strategy. Um, I definitely am a big believer of, of buy and hold. Buy and hold. Definitely. Uh, buy and hold once depends also on what your income is. If you get to a stage where, okay, you know, the banks are, you know, are stopping me on, on purchase or the lenders are stopping me purchasing more, then I would say a small little, maybe a reno flip or something to uh, increase the uh, your income so you can continue purchasing. I have one more question for you, Dragon. Yeah. What, what is the one feature in a house? Because you're, you're selling houses. What's the one feature in a house that you think that buyers find it like a, a non-negotiable in terms of the quality of it. Like Kick, kitchen. Kitchen. I've, I've had so many uh, knockbacks, especially with, if, if it's a, a couple and, uh, you know, the, the, the wife would come around and say, okay, what's the kitchen like? 
And if it's a shitty kitchen, they just she just so not we, interested. what shitty what does shitty mean? Do we need like, like an old twenty year old kitchen? It's yeah, just yeah. falling apart. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know. Oh, yeah. So, so, but, but it doesn't have to be marble schmarble. No, you know, no, like no, get no. all that sort of stuff. But yeah. it just can't be a crappy old kitchen. Exactly. No exactly yeah. the, on. the kitchen is the number one. If you could get the kitchen right, you, you've got to you know one foot step forward. Yeah. In, in selling that property. <laughs> Thanks very much. Dragon Jamovsky, I really enjoy that. Uh, Buyers Agency Australia, great name. Continue to do the good work, mate. Good on you. Thank you, Mark.